Hi, it's me, Ingrid INFP. When I'm in the forest, then it's raining, and I really should be getting out of here. Um, but I, I wanted to talk about something that's been in the INFP verse um, these past few days. It's basically about INFPs questioning themselves in different ways, questioning who they are, questioning if they're right. Uh, putting the blame on themselves, thinking that they're wrong, all that. So Bupa Parglanas, um made a video about um, how people have said that she has a borderline personality disorder. Uh, I don't know why people go on the internet and diagnose people with that kind of thing. But say that that people remind them of their toxic girlfriend or ex or whatever. Um, it seems to happen more for INFP females. I don't know why. <laughs> Maybe I just don't see the bad comments on the male INFP videos. Um, I don't know. Maybe they delete the comments before I even get to see them. I hope that they do. <laughs> Um, but it's sad, you know? Why do we feel a need to do this to each other? I don't know. Of course, it's a few toxic people that destroy it for everybody else, but I don't know. But so that starts making Bufo um, question her sense of identity and all of her problems and everything. And thing is, that's the sort of thing that happens to me too. When somebody questions my reality, <laughs> then I start questioning my reality. I just, I just get stuck there and like I can't get out. It's like a loop. Oh, sorry. It's like a loop of. Um, just self-hatred <laughs> or like s doubt, self-doubt and just going around and around in circles in your mind and that reminds me of Vondel Pete's video um, about ISFPs and how they can be so chill <laughs> and they just don't really question themselves and things as much. They don't make things complicated like we do, but we make things very complicated for ourselves. And so I myself felt that I might have borderline at a certain point in time. Um, but I don't. Um, you have to fit certain criteria and emotional instability is only one of them. And can you even count it as emotional instability? You know, being an INFP, I don't know. Um, do you have an unstable sense of self? I don't think so, but I do see how that can it can be viewed that way. Um, because, well, um, well we question ourselves quite a lot. But it doesn't mean that we have, an, like, no sense of self. It just means that we readily take in other people's opinions. Another thing is uh, suicidal ideation or self-harm, which many INFPs have depression and anxiety. And that in itself leads to those kinds of things. Um, but I think that INFPs, we have... With time, when we're younger, then we don't have all the strategies that we have when we work on ourselves and grow older. And then we can like find other ways to cope with life uh, than hurting ourselves or wanting to disappear. We have other strategies. Oh, I just realized I have a lot of mud on my jeans. It sucks. Okay. <laughs> um. And then chronic feelings of emptiness. Well, you might confuse it with 
numbness that you have when you are depressed but it's not that I think that INFPs don't have chronic feelings of emptiness I think that in general it's um, feelings of um, that you're full of emotion that you have so many intense emotions and thoughts that won't go away I don't think that we have chronic feelings of emptiness um, of course people with PTSD PTSD is often linked with uh, borderline personality disorder which I do think go together hand in hand I think that Oh, it's the train that goes once an hour. <laughs> Sorry. Um, having a neurodivergency, such as ADHD or autism, or in my case, I think that it's just being an INFP. You can be an INFP, have ADHD, and have borderline personality. But um, in general, having a neurodivergency Um, it makes you 20 times more likely to develop borderline personality disorder. Okay, there were some people like uh, shouting in the forest. Okay, um, it was a guy with uh, with autism, probably, uh, who was kind of shouting in the forest. Uh, he came by with his handler, <laughs> this person, whoever this person who was following was. Uh, wherever you are, you're kind of disturbing your peace. <laughs> I'm disturbing the peace just by sitting here with the camera. Anyway, having neurodivergencies predisposes you to having borderline personality. And I... And I think having INFP, being INFP is a neurodivergence in itself, because it's not the neurotypical way of doing things. But it's not a medical diagnosis, so we'll never know. But... Yeah. Having borderline personality disorder is kind of a curse that is placed on you. Nobody will ever take you seriously again once you have that diagnosis placed on you. And that uh, is pretty scary, you know? There are some people with borderline that take care of themselves and others in a good way, you know? Um, but some people don't manage it well at all. And they unfortunately are toxic. And. If you have ADHD, autism, or are neurodivergent in any sense, if you go through trauma and get PTSD or complex PTSD, uh, and if you're female, then you usually get put into the box of uh, BPD, borderline personality disorder. And not because it's an actual disorder. I don't know about that. I think it's a combination of different things. And I, I seriously doubt that the diagnosis as it exists today really is a helpful diagnosis to have. Because um, you're basically just labeling a person toxic medically. When toxicity is about our actions, not about our mental troubles, you know? We can act it out in different ways. Um, I don't know if I'm making any sense, I probably am not. But I think the INFPs, we just really question ourselves a lot, and especially if you're female and there are male people that come in our lives and say that 
we have certain disorders because we didn't tr treat them the way that they wanted to us to treat them. Um, we try to treat everybody with kindness and politeness and respect. Um, I think that we do, but um, sometimes there are people who are generally cruel people, um, abusive people, who take, like, have an advantage over us and hurt us. And to diagnose ourselves with a personality disorder isn't the solution, you know. Um, we need to be able to sift through the trauma. We need to be able to cope with daily living as a neurodivergent person. Okay? If you don't believe that INFPs are neurodivergent, then at least like learning to cope with being an INFP in a world that wasn't created for INFPs. Um, I think that a lot of people will agree to that. I personally don't think I have a borderline personality. I did think so at the time when I was on Tumblr in 2014-15 or whatever. Um, even earlier, 2012. I thought I had every diagnosis on the planet. But it didn't help me. Because I didn't seek help. You know? And I will not allow people to just diagnose me with all sorts of different things. Because I, I'm the one who's in charge of my life. And that's kind of our strength as INFPs. Is that we do know who we are. We don't need to question ourselves all the time. Because we already have that figure out. Um, other people don't question themselves to the same extent that we do. And that's part of our problems. I also saw Psych Castro uh, doing a list of what INFPs uh, shouldn't do. And one of them is blame ourselves for everything and think that INFPs don't need to exist in the world. Because we do need to exist. And we uh, don't need to take the blame for everything that happens to us. You know? I'm sensing that there's somebody behind me. I don't know what it is. I hope it isn't a big animal. <laughs> or maybe I do. Maybe I do hope that there's a bear somewhere. <laughs> maybe it's just the rain. Um, you see, like, even here, the NE is just going, you know? The NE is just going, and I liked how Bufo was talking about, like, spinning a, spinning a coin, you know? It's just always spinning. <laughs> All these things are spinning in my head all the time. And I've thought about things so many times before. Before even, like, you know. I don't need to, to talk it through in therapy to know these things. Like, usually when my therapist says something, it's like, oh. I, I think that my therapist is ISFP, actually. Now that I think about it. But... He makes things so simple. And he's just like, you know, be yourself, you know? Um, why are you making things so complicated? He knows that I make things very complicated and I constantly question everything. And he's like, you're right. <laughs> you don't need to wonder if you're wrong, you're right. And that's so refreshing to hear. Um, I think that if I, like, there are certain therapists that are brain of J's. And they make me question a lot of things, and that's good, but sometimes... I think that for me personally, I, I need somebody who makes me not 
question things all the time. Um, somebody that just makes things feel simple. And that's another reason why I'm friends with my ISFJ friend, is that he makes life seem so simple and not so complicated as is for me. I can like show him all the fun and complicated things in the world, uh, but he'll always bring me back to earth and show me like the nice things that are around. I don't want to diss any like intuitive people out there because I do enjoy intuitive conversations a ton and I crave them with all my being but when it comes to sorting through my problems I I need to do it on my own but with the help of somebody who makes things more simple you know that takes off all of the unbearable load of all of the thoughts and feelings that are constantly circling through my head so yes that was that. This isn't related to borderline at all, but I'm just saying that in order to have a personality disorder, it has to be pervasive, it has to be in every stage of your life, um, at work, with your friends, with your family, uh, when you're alone. It has to be all the time. And it has to be uh, that you uh, fit five out of nine criteria. Which, if you think about it, it's not completely obvious that we fit, you know? But sometimes we have to learn to just accept a fact, even though there are many other possibilities around. So, the fact is, I do not have borderline personality disorder. If somebody tells me that I do, well, maybe I'll look into it, but, you know, I have a intuitive sense that it's not going to be like that. Um, in order to survive in the world, I have to believe that I'm not toxic. A toxic person would not be questioning things in this way all the time. I'm not immune towards doing things that might hurt people, but I uh, try my best not to. So that, in a sense, makes me a good person. Um, you know, sometimes I just need to make things much more simple than, than things really are, you know? Because otherwise my, my natural state is making things way more complicated than they actually are. So making things more simple than they are is not a bad thing. And, you know... If a doctor tells you that you do not have this disorder, that you have this, you know, instead of double thinking everything all the time, just think, okay, well, maybe I don't agree, but you can think that way. Um, I'll have to see for myself if uh, that makes sense to me. Um, or like, oh, finally somebody who um, sees what I see, you know, hopefully it's that and not the other way around. Um, but yeah, sorry, I have to clean the lens because it's raining. I should probably get out of this forest before it starts getting dark and it starts raining all over me because I have like mud on my jeans and everything. Um, but yeah, like, sure, INFPs, we might have all these disorders, I don't know. But it isn't useful to us unless we get help for these certain things and that they, these things that are given to us to help with these things actually help. If people give us help that doesn't actually help us, then what are we even asking them help for? It's like you wouldn't ask advice from somebody who... like. You shouldn't accept criticism from a person that you wouldn't accept advice from. Same thing, like... If, if somebody is telling you that you have a certain diagnosis and they don't have the qualifications for it, then why are you believing that person? 
like stop <laughs> um, if you're around people who are constantly putting you down like think a second why are you still with them stop <laughs> you know um, I think that my ISFJ friend is pretty good at this at making things seem simple my ISFP therapist too they make things seem much more simple than than like I imagine that they are um, and sure they don't have the intuition that maybe like an INFP has but they get the job done <laughs> you know and it kind of dampens it puts a puts a damper on these things and you can finally relax you know and just like oh i don't need to have this question in my brain constantly 24 7. um i can just let it go and do something else you know go out into the forest you know sometimes i just write to my sfj friend and i say like Oh, how are you doing? You know, and you'll just be like, oh, well, it was a tiring day, or oh, it's fine. And it's like, this is small talk, something that INFPs are hate, you know, but it kind of gives a sense of safety, of security, of like, things don't have to be that complicated in the world, you know? Borderline personality like this is complicating the world quite a lot if somebody treats you not right then leave if somebody is intentionally being hurtful to you then don't stay there but if somebody does something that you found hurtful but you know it wasn't their intent like talk to them you know it, things don't have to be so convoluted, um, so stressful. Like, I was telling my uh, ISFP uh, therapist about um, my issue with uh, the doctor who uh, we had different opinions. And he was like, oh, well, you had different opinions and you ha handled it well. And I was like, are, are you sure that I handled it well? You know, like, um, I didn't want to cause like chaos, I didn't want to create animosity, blah blah blah, and he was like, well, it went well, you said so yourself, so why are you double thinking it? And I was like, yeah, okay, okay, I'll, I'll admit to that, <laughs> you know, same thing goes for my ISFJ friend, like, you know, I get into a fight with somebody else and He's just like, he'll listen to my explanation of what things went and he's just like, I'll stand by you, whatever, whatever happens. Um, he doesn't need to understand it completely, he just accepts. Um, <laughs> it kind of reminds me about how uh, once he um, dated some guy and then, and then the guy was really a toxic person you know and my SFJ friend is really 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 sweet and nice and always very giving but this was an a toxic ENFP I think who um, was really negative and um, was not very nice towards me uh, when I met him and my ISFJ friend when when I left because I had to leave um, I don't live in the same town um, he told me after the fact that when he left, he told the guy that if, if you don't accept Ingrid, uh, this isn't going to work out. And, <laughs> and he said that if you accept me, you have to accept Ingrid too. Like she's part of the package. And I was like, okay, to, to my friend, I was like, you know, like you didn't have to do that, right? Um, and he was like, but I feel that it's right. He was like, if they don't accept you, then they're not going to treat me right. And I was, 
I can't argue with that. And it's the kind of unconditional love that I think ISFJs are really good at. And the, the kind of let things go of ISFPs is also very liberating. And I think that I was having so much trouble with with the healthcare system, with the um, autism slash ADHD, all that. I was losing myself, you know, I was like going insane. Um, but talking to my ISFP therapist and my ISFJ friend really brought me back to earth. And it's like, what does this matter? What does this matter? Uh, not really, it doesn't matter. Um, Sure, I wanted to have talk therapy, but at the moment I have talk therapy with uh, my psychologist. I should, um, instead of worrying about the future, I can just focus on what's going on that's good in my life right now. And there are a lot of good things. So, yeah, this video was kind of a mess because I was talking about borderline and questioning ourselves and all that. But in the end, I just want to say that it's good sometimes to surround yourself with sensors that understand you. They might not understand you completely, but they accept you the way that you are, and that they will simplify things for you. I think that is important for INFPs. I mean, people say this about INFJs a lot, that like they're, everything is so complicated in their world and stuff, and that the ENFPs as well, like, because they're dominant intuitives, right? But I think that we need to be able to ground ourselves and that the world is pretty simple. Like, I'm sitting in a forest, there are trees. The trees make noise when the wind flows through them. There doesn't need to be anything more than that, you know? I'm sitting here, in this forest, talking to a phone. Weird, but okay. And thinking about life. And it doesn't need to be more complicated than that. I don't need to go into an existential crisis just because other people have told me certain things that make me question my own reality and make me want to see everybody's perspective and want to heal the world and everything. Stop. Okay. Go in nature and... Sorry, I thought I was going to uh, make the phone fall down. But just like sit here. There's rain. The rain is cold. I should probably go inside. But... I feel a sense of peace, and if I feel more cold, I can always put uh, my gloves that I uh, have in my backpack. If I feel wet, I have an extra pair of socks that I have in my backpack. If I feel thirsty, I have some water in my backpack. If I have food, well, if I'm hungry, I don't have any food in my backpack, but I uh, can walk on my way out of this forest and uh, find a supermarket. Um, and like, things are simple in this world. They're so much more simple than we INFPs, like, think. And that's the beauty of it. So yeah, I hope you guys are having a good autumn day. Um, my fingers are freezing, so I can't hold this phone anymore. Um, but uh, have a great day, everybody.